Hello, friends and students. Very happy to see you back again. I very welcome you all to the channel. So if you are someone who is following the channel, who is seeing all the videos that I'm sharing nowadays with you, but yet not have subscribed the channel. So it's a kind request from my side. Please subscribe the channel and share the channel and the videos as much as possible with those students who are interested in studying chemistry, who have doubts in chemistry, who uh, find some difficulties with chemistry, who are, who are lacking with some fundamental concepts of chemistry so this will be a great help to me uh, with this request let's start with our today's session in our previous sessions we were discussing about the thermochemistry and some of the practice questions so i'm going to discuss the same thing same document with you and we'll try to cover most of the questions in this session okay so let me share the screen with you and uh, i hope the screen is visible to you oh not this one i'm so sorry this one Right, and also I'm putting my video up so that you can see the screen better. Got it? So this was your question number 10 that we discussed in yesterday's session. Now coming on to the question number 11. So don't say this one question 13 and question 14, not about this. Just focus on the question that's been given to us. So in a, it's an experiment to measure the enthalpy of combustion. Enthalpy of combustion, that means delta HC of the ethanol using the apparatus and setup shown below. So this is a kind of simple setup which has been shown where you can see that you have ethanol as a fuel. Okay, it's been taken as a fuel and it's been burnt. When it's being burned, so of course, after combustion, it's going to release certain energy. That heat is being supplied to the water, which is there in a beaker. Your temperature, your thermometer measures that temperature and that increase in temperature and the other things, how much of a, um, uh, like mass was being taken for the ethanol and the water, these together are all going to give you the, um, the heat content which is being transferred, the heat content which is being transferred here. Okay, so I'm sure the idea is uh, simple here. So the formula that you must have all seen is Q equal to MC delta T. So basically they are asking you to find out the enthalpy of combustion that means delta HC. Now you may ask me that in this equation we don't see any delta HC anywhere. So you must be knowing that delta HC or any kind of enthalpy of reaction is equal to NQ. Okay, um, so sorry, this is actually the opposite. Your Q, that means the heat which is being supplied is N times of delta HC. What does that mean? If I have to find out delta HC, so that would be Q divided by N. Okay, always remember that delta HC is always given per mole. Okay, it's per mole. But of course, this is not the case now that in your experiment, you are always talking about the mole, one mole of mass only. You may have any kind of molar concentration. You may have any kind of molar values, right? So, but if you want to find out, find out the value for per mole, you need to take the total heat content, which has been transferred to water divided by the actual number of moles of that substance. I hope this part is clear. So these are the two formulas that we are going to use in order to solve this question. Got it? Now let's see what are the informations being given to us. See, they have given us that maximum temperature of water reaches to 30 degrees Celsius. We all know that combustion reactions are exothermic in nature. That means that they will have delta H value being negative. And in this process, after combustion, some heat energy is being released always. This is the heat energy released because it's an exothermic process. So if the heat energy is released, which is directly proportional to increase in temperature, Temperature. So we can see that certain rise in temperature is definitely expected. But when it comes to maximum temperature, so it's obvious that the reaction is completed like the whole combustion reaction has already taken place. So that time the final temperature is equal to 30 degrees Celsius. Initial temperature is also given to you when the reaction was not started. That time the initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Mass of the water is being given as 100 grams mass of water which is 100 grams okay always remember this mass the one that you see in this equation is actually the mass of the water content in which the thermometer is being kept got it right and then the loss in mass of ethanol that's been given to you as 0 0.230 grams what is this thing so this is the loss of ethanol now why we are talking of the mass which has been lost here see you may take any amount of mass of ethanol you may take 10 gram of it but that's not useful to us the only part which is actually being burnt 
that is the part that is being used to us because this is the part. Let, let's say I'm calling this as no, let's not. Okay, M dash. I may call this as M dash. So let's say M dash is the part of ethanol mass which has been lost. So this mass is only going to convert into Q, right? That means the heat. And this is the thing that's going inside the water and later on increasing the temperature of thermometer. So that's why we are just being interested about the M dash and not the total mass of ethanol. So the loss of mass of ethanol, uh, let's call this as M dash, which is equal to 0 0.23 grams. Okay. And also the molar mass has been given to us, which is equal to 46.08, right? From these two values, you can actually find out the moles of ethanol that would come out to be 0 0.23 by 46.08. Okay, now what we need to do, just put the values inside uh, these equations and we'll try to get the answer. So let me make a final equation for you. So you have Q equal to MC delta D and also Q is equal to N delta HC. So let me write it over here. So this becomes N delta HC, which is equal to MC delta T, isn't it? I have just equated the two equations. This is equation number one and equation number two. I just equated them, right? So your delta HC, which has always been given in per moles, come out to be MC delta T by N. Now I think this part becomes simple. You just need to put the different values and you'll be able to get your answer. Again, what is this mass? This mass uh, is nothing but the mass of water, okay, in which the thermometer is being kept and this is being given in grams. Again, C is the specific heat capacity of water, which is always constant, and this is always given in joules, right? But for this sort of like for these kinds of questions, when they have already asked you that you need to give your answer in kilojoule, so just convert this into kilojoule here itself. So your C will become 4.18 divided by 1000. And what is your delta T? See, delta T is your 30 minus 20. Now, you may ask me here that we do we need to convert this into Kelvin? Although this is not required because here we are just talking about the delta T. Change in temperature, whether you do this in degree Celsius or in Kelvin, this is going to be the same. So you need not to do anything here. Then comes uh, uh, the div divide by number of moles. So this will be your 0 0.23 divided by 46.08. Now you just need to solve this question. Although in order to get the answer here, it's not even required because the thing uh, as given to you just that way, just match your answer and you will be able to see. Because I can already see that the answer is C. So let's match our answer with the answer which is being given here. So you can see it's 100 into 4.18 multiplied by 10, which would be of course uh, after subtracting 20 by 30, then 0 0.23 divided by 46.08 multiplied by 1000. So this gives you the answer and I hope that this is quite clear to you that how we proceeded with this kind of question if it's been given to you in such a way like in in the broken way uh, and the, all the things are not being given to you in the uh, straight manner okay fine now moving on to the another question So now after this question, let's move on to the another one where we can see the question number 12 and this seems to be a simple question. Which equation represents the standard enthalpy of atomization of the bromine molecule? We all know that bromine exists in the liquid form, right? It's actually liquid bromine at the room temperature and this is in this form like a diatomic molecule, right? Now we want to atomize it. It means that we want to convert this to bromine atom. So of course, from this one mole of bromine, I'm going to get two bromine atoms. I hope this part is clear. Whenever you find out the enthalpy of atom atomization, always remember that the uh, materials that you're getting, the atoms that you are getting at the end, they should be gaseous in the state, okay? Now here, either this is the correct equation or I may also give you one another equation. You just tell me, what do you think should be the answer here? Like one mole of bromine gas and here I'm making it as half moles of bromine. See, what is the difference among two or are they same? Here I can see that one mole of the bromine molecule, which is at room temperature, is being converted into two moles of bromine atom. Okay, which is obvious because one bromine molecule should give you two bromine atoms. 
On the another side, you can see that um, uh, the, in this expression, we are saying that half of the bromine molecules, they have been used to produce one mole of bromine. So whether this enthalpy of atomization and standard enthalpy of atomization definition, does this talk about the one mole of source material or the one mole of atoms? Okay, that's the question. Or this is the confusion this you may might have. So, so basically here always remember that you need to make the atoms which are one mole in amount. So of course, for this reason, like if I have to decide between A and B, so I will choose B as the answer because in this case, I'm able to get one mole of the bromine in their gaseous state. So that's why the answer becomes A. Although sometimes in some of the books, you may also see this kind of expression which is being given in B, but this is not a very correct information. Always remember this thing, okay? Okay, then coming on to the next expression, next question in which they are asking you, in which reaction does entropy decrease? What is entropy? Entropy is the degree of randomness, right? Randomness that tells you the entropy. So basically, if your system is not very systematically arranged, it, if it is random, the arrangement is very random. So we say that the entropy is higher. But they are asking you in which of the reaction entropy is decreasing. So basically, they are talking of delta S to be negative. Okay, so for that our system needs to be more systematic, they should have lesser number of moves. So let's see, first of all, let's see all the uh, different options and then try to determine. See here I can see that a solid thing is being converted into aqueous. So already you know that solids are present in the form of crystals, right? So if something is being changing from solid to aqueous, so this way we are actually moving towards higher kinetic energy. That means the molecules are more towards the randomness. So definitely this is not the answer. Here also you can see um, both the side the moles are equal because they are two and two moles, but solid and aqueous thing is being changing into aqueous into gas. So let's just cut out the part which is aqueous. So we can say that there is something solid which is being changing into gas at the end. Again, gaseous molecules, they have um, too much of kinetic energy so that they can provide them high degree of randomness. That means the delta S value is positive. Now coming on to the C part. So B is also not the answer. Coming on to C part, so we can see that here we have gaseous molecules and they are being changing into solid. So we have gaseous species that is being changing to more systematically arranged um, matter, which is solid instead. And also I can see that two moles are converting into one mole. That means two molecules are converting into one molecule. So both way I can say that that delta S value is becoming negative, negative because the final entropy is lower and the initial entropy is higher. This is how you calculate, right? Delta S is your S final minus S initial. So your final value is, uh, is low because it's a solid and initial value is high. So certainly you are going to get the value to be negative. This is the thing I was telling you here. Got it? So the C will become your answer. And also let's see the D part. D is not the answer because again, the solid thing is being converted into something which is solid and gas. Again, which increases the, um, the randomness, right? So that's why this is also not the answer. So this was kind of a very simple question. Let's move on to the another one, which represents to the electron affinity. See, what is electron affinity? Affinity for the electron. What is affinity? Affinity means love. So love for electron. Now, of course, if you are loving some something or some person, then you will try to be with them more affectionately, right? So in electron affinity, this is the tendency or this is the amount of energy which is being released or is being taken in when a certain substance takes in electron okay in its gaseous state so so this is your electron affinity so here in, in this case i can see that the oxidation state of uh, aluminium is changing from two plus to aluminium three plus that obviously means the release of electron it's releasing electron it's not taking electron love for electron means that you are going to take electron the species will take up the electron right so this is not the answer because this is releasing the electron now coming on to carbon, which takes an electron to form carbon negative. So definitely this should be the answer, but let's still see the other molecule, other options. Here I can see neither it's been taking up the electron nor it's losing the electron. It's just the atomization. We have a chlorine molecule, which has been broken down into chlorine atoms, two atoms of chlorine. So this is an atomization energy and not the electron affinity. You're just breaking the bond, which is there between the atoms. 
Now coming on to D part again, it's similar to that of A, where your sulfur is being changing to sulfur positive. So it's been changing from zero oxidation state to plus one oxidation state, which means that the electron is being released and not taken in. So that gives B as the possible answer. I hope this part is clear to you. This was kind of a very simple question. Right. So now moving on to the another question, which is your question number 15. And this is one of a very important question, which is related to your born Haber cycle for the formation of sodium oxide. Sodium oxide is what? It's an ionic ionic compound. So born Haber cycle, you basically use for ionic compounds where you have certain ions and they form together a certain salt or certain lattice structure, right? Here, what we want to make, uh, make we want to make sodium oxide. What is sodium oxide? It's Na2O. Right. So obviously, if you have to make sodium oxide, what would you do? You need to use sodium and oxygen. Sodium normally at room temperature exists in solid form and oxygen exists as an oxygen, uh, diatomic oxygen molecule, which is gaseous in state. And this sodium oxide, this is also solid in state. So basically, when I'm writing down this kind of reaction, what is this reaction if I ask you? Although this is not uh, balanced yet, but yes, let's say that we are preparing one mole of sodium oxide. So I need two moles of of sodium here and half of the moles of oxygen. Now, if I ask you what is this reaction? So you would say that delta HF, this gives you the formation of sodium oxide. But is this so simple that you have taken sodium and oxygen and you will be able to get the sodium oxide? No, we need to do certain steps. What are the steps? First of all, I need to convert the sodium solid if I need to find out the lattice enthalpy, this is the delta HF. But if I want to know that how much of the energy to put in to give the system so that it breaks down or so that a new lattice uh, molecule is, a lattice um, structure is being found for sodium oxide, then there are further other things that you need to consider. Let's see what are those. So sodium is in its solid form. Let's convert the sodium into its gaseous form. Okay, this is done. Now this sodium, which is in the gaseous form, this needs to be uh, oxidized to sodium plus ion, which is now in gaseous state. So this is the final state I need to have for the sodium so that I can make the crystal of sodium oxide. Similarly, for oxygen, if you see, this is a little different here. First of all, you need to break down this oxygen molecule so that you get two oxygen atoms. If we consider this to be half of the mole. So what would you say? Half of the mole means one oxygen, uh, like half, uh, just one oxygen atom. So in this case, you may write it as one. Otherwise, you need to show it. If half is not being written, you need to write it as O and O. But here it's already half of the O2. So we may just write O. Right now, this is in the gaseous state, which is perfectly fine. I need to give it one electron so that it becomes O minus, although this is not the state in which oxygen is very stable. So this needs to be given more, one more electron so that it changes to oxide ion, which is O2 minus ion, and that's in the gaseous state. Okay, let's first of all see that whatever energies that I have shown you here, what are those? When you convert sodium to sodium gas, solid to gas, so this is your sublimation energy. You need to put in energy to convert solid substance into the gaseous state. Now, when sodium is already in its gaseous state and you are taking out one electron from this isolated gaseous atom, then this is what you call as the ionization energy. For sodium, this exists in a unipositive state. So that's why you, we just need to count the ionization, first ionization energy. But if let's say instead of sodium, they would have given you aluminum or magnesium, you must have also calculated the other second and third ionization energies and then added up them together. Coming on to oxygen, which is in the diatomic state here, we, we converted this to atomic state, right? For this, we have given atomization energy or decomposition energy. Now, this gaseous oxygen needs to be given electron, which is electron affinity. Again, this O minus has been given one more electron so that you get O2 minus. So, you may write it as Ea1 and Ea2. Got it? Now, these two are there in their gaseous state. As we can see, this is also in its gaseous state. This is also in its gaseous state. Now, what they can do, they may combine with each other. Let me write it down here. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's let's write in the same color. So, we have Na plus in the gaseous state and O2 minus in the gaseous state. What happened, Bitter? I'm so sorry for the disturbance. This was my daughter who got afraid from the elephant on the TV. 
Uh, okay, now coming back to the uh, question. So yes, this was this was the thing I, we were discussing. So you have oxide ion, which is now in the gaseous state. Now, if you make from these two ions, which are during the gaseous state, and if you make a crystal lattice from it, so you will be able to get sodium oxide. Got it? So this is the sodium oxide that you need to form. Now, just remember this thing that uh, this gives you the lattice enthalpy energy value. But if you are bringing sodium plus ion and O2 minus ion to form the crystal, which is now in the solid, solid state, what you need to do, you need to give energy. So if you see this particular reaction, so here energy will be uh, uh, will be released. Why it will be released? Because the because new bonds are being formed. Uh, a crystal lattice, which is now in the solid state, that's being formed. But the same way, your lattice enthalpy can also be given in this way, that if you have a crystal lattice and you want to break down one mole of uh, the bond of uh, sodium and oxygen. So again, this is your lattice enthalpy, but here the energy will be released. Sorry, it will be taken in, okay? So this will be taken in here. Your delta H value is positive and here the, your delta H value is negative. So both ways you can actually give the definition of lattice enthalpy. Just remember this particular part, okay? I hope this whole thing is clear. Now the thing that I have drawn here for you can also be given in very simpler way in this manner uh, as they have already given in the question. So you can just very quickly go through with all those things. Sodium, uh, okay, they are being starting it from the here. We have sodium in the solid state, which gets converted into sodium gas by this sublimation energy. But we are multiplying this with two because we have two moles of sodium, as you can see in the balanced chemical equation. Similarly, this sodium, which is in the gaseous state, uh, okay, this, uh, this is exactly the same thing. There is no difference. Now, again, this sodium in the gaseous state is being changed into sodium ion. This time you are providing ionization energy. Again, the energy is being given given in if you see okay the energy is being given again for the two moles of it right similarly for the oxygen first of all you will hear it's fine and here they are getting this converted to the at atomization energy so atomization energy is being given in so you can see that value which is positive again when the oxygen atoms are being formed they need to be changed into ions so here you can see in the first state we change them to o minus which actually released energy which is 141 but later on when we again gave up one more electron this gets converted to o2 minus and here the energy was being uh, taken right this is an endothermic reaction because this will be difficult when already one electron is being taken up by the oxygen and to give one more electron to it this would be a little difficult task i hope this part is clear now sodium plus ion and o2 minus ion they are already there in the gaseous state now you can see now you can see this like ions in the other way or you may see in this way as i told you both of them will be the lattice energy here it's been given in such a way that sodium oxide crystal when that being broken down uh, one more of it's being broken down then the sodium plus ion and o2 minus ion in their gaseous states will be formed so that's your lattice enthalpy i hope up to this part is clear now the question is that how do you find the lattice enthalpy if you are already being provided this flow chart if it's not been provided you can make your own that's not a very difficult task got it but if it's being given to you what you need to do so so let me show you here it's very simple actually. So as you can see that the direction of lattice enthalpy is in this manner. Let me choose a different color uh, like this. Okay. So I can see that the direction of my lattice enthalpy is in this direction. So all those energies which are being taken in, uh, which are endothermic in nature, you just add all those energy in the same manner. And even if the energy is in the opposite way, you just add them together the same way. No, nothing you have to do. Just add them exactly the same way. Just be very careful about this thing that this was your delta HF, no? Delta HF, if you see, in this case, what you are doing, you are preparing sodium oxide. But in lattice enthalpy, you are breaking sodium oxide. So here they works in an opposite manner. So just remember this thing that whatever is the um, sign of delta HF, you just change it to the opposite sign. If it is minus here, you just make it as positive. Okay, because these are referring to two opposite reactions. In one case, you are preparing the crystal and in another case, you are uh, breaking the crystal. So that's why the energies will be different. Uh, not the energy, only the sign will be different. Now you can match your values. So you should have 414 to be positive. That makes C and D not to be my answer. Now let's see A and B. So this is positive. This is perfectly fine. Then you have two times of 108, which is fine here. 
okay in this case also it's fine then we have 249 which is also fine then we have two times of 496 which also seems to be fine then you have minus 141 no problem just put it as it is and then you have 790 in this direction that is also fine that means a should be my answer b is not the answer because they changed the sign of minus 141 to uh, plus 141 which should not be the case you have to change the sign only for delta h f now if they ask you like how the energies are being determined is there any formula so you actually have a formula what you need to do you just take your delta h f and all the rest of the energies just sum them up like here i gave you sublimation energy you just take the sublimation energy and always remember that if there are number of moles uh, you need to multiply or divide you have to do that okay even if i write it or not here it's understood similarly plus the delta now you can see that after sublimation we have ionization energy so the ionization energy one two three that depends uh, how many ionization energies you need to provide for oxygen you can see this is your delta h atomization then you have delta delta H electron affinity which is 1 plus delta H electron affinity which is 2 and then finally you can see the lattice enthalpy which is delta H lattice enthalpy. You just all, add all of them together already you can see delta HF and delta L H uh, sorry lattice enthalpy they are in the opposite sides of uh, equal to so you will get your answer the same way. Got it? I hope this question is very important and it's been understood by you. So you can see your A is the answer here. Now, moving on to the another question, which is your question number 16. Let's see this one. <coughs> Carbon forms many of the compound and uh, chlorine reacts with the methane to form this uh, uh, methyl chloride and hydrochloric acid. So here in this question, they are asking you to calculate the change, enthalpy change of the reaction using the section 11 of the data booklet. Okay, I do not know uh, the section 11 data booklet. I don't have that one, but no problem. Whatever values that are being given to us in the solution part, let's try to assume what thing they must be talking of. See, they are talking about bond breaking and bond making, right? Bond breaking and bond making. So I'm sure that in section 11, data booklet they are talking they, they have given the values of different bonds which are being there that you need to break or that needs to be made okay no problem you have ch4 so this is how your ch4 looks like right then you have cl2 so we have cl cl like this and then we have ch3 cl let me make it this way h h and h and then we have hydrochloric acid so first of all i need to see that this equation is balanced so this is balanced so there is no problem now let's see what are the different kinds of bonds that i need to break first so in this one molecule i can see there are four ch bonds in this, I have one CL-CL bond that I need to break. Here, I have one CCL bond and three CH bond. And here, I have one HCL bond. Now, the values, although, uh, again, uh, in data booklet, all the values are being given to you. But since I don't have the data booklet for now, so so you may just take the values from here, which are being given in, the, in this marking scheme. See, for CH, they have given 414. So since we have four, Four CH bonds that need to be broken, broken. So just put it as four one four like this. Then for CL CL they have given it as two forty two. So plus two forty two that you need to do. Okay, and since we have just one mole of it, so we'll put it this way. The, this becomes your reactant part for which you need to break down the energy right break down the bonds then it's a reactant minus product i'm sure that you remember in previous classes we have discussed about this delta h reaction if you have to find out from the information of bond breaking and bond making so it should happen in this way that delta h which is required to break energy which is required to break the bond you may write it this way uh the energy which is required to break the bond okay minus the energy which is required to make the bond now which one which bond you need to break for of course for the reactants right because first of all these reactants they will all change into their atomic state when i will break all these atoms which are, which are there in the molecule now each and every single atom is completely free when they are free then they are free to rearrange themselves in the form of product Got it? So breaking is always for reactant and making or formation is always for the product. So I've already written this reactant part. Now coming on to the um, making, like product, uh, product part. So CCL bond. So for CCL, you can see that the energy is 324. I have just one CCL bond. So you just put it as 324. Plus three times of CH bond. CH bond, we already saw the value is equal to 414. 
plus for HCL, you can see that the value is equal to 755. So I will take it as 755. Now you just make your calculation at the end. You should be able to get your answer equal to minus 99 kilojoule per mole of energy. That means that in order for this reaction to happen, minus 99 kilojoule, this much 99 kilojoule of energy will be released. Got it? I hope this thing is clear to you. So now moving on to the another part, you may see uh, draw and label an enthalpy level diagram for this uh, reaction. So you can see that this reaction is minus 99 kilojoule of energy is released. What kind of reaction is this? This is an exothermic reaction. So which is very obvious that if you are being given a reaction coordinate and energy, potential energy in this manner, so your reactant should be on the higher energy state and product should be on the lower energy state. Now, what was my reaction? So you can see that this was CH4, okay, methane which was being reacted to chlorine, right? And this gave you CH3Cl and uh, you can see FCL. Got it? So these are the energy and what is the energy difference, which is I think in this case, they want to ask you. So that energy difference is delta H, which is being the difference between the energies of reactant and product. And that's equal to minus 99 kilojoule. But how this reaction pathway is being seen? So it's not as simple. You need to also go to a higher energy state where the transition state of this uh, reactant and product is being seen. Okay, this is called as the transition state. We write it in the form of hash. Got it? And this energy difference, the rest of it, that the reactant molecules must have so that they can get converted to product. This is what you call as the activation energy. You call this as the energy barrier. Okay, so this much extra amount of energy should be there for the reactants so that they get converted into the reactant molecules. I hope this part is clear, right? So this is how your exothermic reaction looks like and you can also see the diagram being shown here. Nice? Now, similarly, we have the another and the last, very last question from this document that I wanted to share with you. Although I have many other questions from the thermochemistry part as well, but I think up to now, we have discussed all different kinds of questions that you may face from this part of thermochemistry. Now, coming on to this very last question, an equation for the combustion of propane is given to you. This is your combustion of propane, right? Okay. Now, determine the standard enthalpy change of delta H for this reaction using the section 11 data booklet. Again, if you remember, your section 11 data booklet was giving you the information based on bonds broken and bonds formed. Got it? So, we need to see what are the different points of bonds which are being there here and what we need to form here. First of all, you need to make a C3H8 molecule. So you know that your propane molecule looks like this. Got it? Here you have two hydrogens. Here you have three hydrogens. Also here you have three hydrogens. And this is how your propane looks like. Then you have oxygen, which looks this way. And then you have the products like CO2. This is how your CO2 looks. And then you have the water molecule, which looks this way. Although here I have not balanced them. So which is also very important that you do so. So here you have just one mole of it. Here you have five moles of oxygen. Here you have three moles of carbon dioxide. And then you have four moles of water. Got it? Now, what are the different kinds of bond that you may see here? So here I can see that there is CC bond that you may see here, here, and here. So we have CC bond. How many CC bond? We have two CC bonds. And how many CH bonds are there? So just count all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because we have eight hydrogens and all of them are attached to carbon. So this way we have eight CH bonds. How many oxygen? So oxygen, oxygen bonds um, is just one in the oxygen molecule, but we have such five molecules of oxygen. So I need to see five OO bond dissociation here. Okay, and this is double bond actually. Then you need to see the C double bond O. This is the kind of bond I can see. In one molecule, I may see there are two. If there are three molecules, I will be able to see three times two, which will be six CO bonds. And similarly, in one water molecule, I can see that there is one OH and two OH. So two OH bonds are there in one water molecule. So in four molecules, there will be four times two. There this will be three times two. Okay, I hope this part is clear. If you know this thing or if you have done this part very accurately, then rest of the things are just you have to take down the values and put them there, right? <laughs> this is what we do. So in order to get the delta H of reaction, again, what do you do? Delta H, uh, like energy which is required to break the bond, 
to break. This is bond breaking minus the delta H, which is required to form the bond. Now you break the bond of reactants and you form the bonds for the product. Okay, got it? So my delta H bond breaking. Now how many bonds we have? Two CC bond and eight CH bond that needs to be broken. Again, you can take the CH value, which is equal to 414. How many four CH bonds we have? We have eight. So eight times 414. Again, two bonds, two CC bonds. And you can see the energies of CC bond, which is equal to 346. So just put the value as 346. Similarly, in the reactant side, we also have five bonds of oxygen, double bond oxygen. So, and their value is equal to 498. So you just take down this part, you solve them together. So this way you will be able to know that how much energy to be given to break all the bonds. The reactant part is done. Now coming on to the product part where we have six CO bonds. For CO bond, you can see the energy is equal to 804. So six times 804, then four, two times like eight OH bonds. For OH bond, you can see that the energy is equal to 463. So you just take it as 463, add them together, you will be able to get the energy of product and the reactant. Now solve them together. At the end, you will be able to get certain energy. In this case, this will be equal to minus of 2034. What does this tell you? This says that this, this reaction is also exothermic in nature, which is obvious because this is the combustion reaction. And we all know that combustion reactions are what? They are exothermic in nature. And for them, the delta H reaction value should come out to be negative, being exothermic. Is this clear? So this is your part one. This is kind of similar that we did in the previous section. Now in the sec question number, uh, like part number B, they're again asking you the enthalpy change for the reaction from the section 12 data booklet. So of course in this is section 12, earlier this was section 11. So the information would be different. Although here it's not very clear to me like uh, what information they have given, but let's try to understand what it could be. We already know one thing that if we have delta H reaction, so for combustion reactions, what do we do? We always do. If, if the combustion informations are given to you, we will do reactant minus product in case of combustion. For formation, what do we do? For formation, we take the energies of them from the product minus reactant. Okay, like this way. And if it's bond breaking and bond making, such kind of things are being given to you. So you will see the amount of energy required to break the bond and then to form. It. Got it? So, so based on this information, let's try to understand that in section 12 data booklet, what information is being given to you? Is this combustion or is this uh, formation? Let's try to see. See, in this case, they are doing four, four of something and three of something. Like what kind of modes we have four and three, reactant side or product side? So clearly you can see it's only product side, right? Three moles of carbon dioxide, four moles of water. So it's actually product minus reactant. And this is one and this is five, right? Do you see that? So sometimes even if the information, complete information is not there, you can actually make uh, uh, the use of your mind to understand something. And here this will be minus of one mole of 105. Now, now the question is that why they have just given one thing here, like why they are not talking about oxygen. Because you already know that oxygen is in, its, is, is in its elemental state. So for this, the delta HF value is already equal to zero. Because you are not forming the oxygen. It's already there in the nature. What is there to form? So since you are not forming it, so there is no energy change in what? Got it? So this is zero. And for C, C, uh, like, um, C3H8, like C you can see the formation energy, which is being given as minus of 105. Now you just do product minus reactant and just solve this whole thing. Ultimately, you should be able to get minus 2043. Now I'm not solving this for you because similar kind of questions based on delta HF we have already done in our previous sessions in quite detail. Here there is one thing that I want you to understand, uh, which is this thing. That whether you calculate your delta H reaction from the information of combustion values or from the uh, information of formation values or from the information of breaking and formation values, you should get same delta H reaction because your reaction is same, right? So in a reaction, you have same reactants, you have same products. So the energy difference among them, which we were showing there, right? This energy difference, which is your delta H, this should also be same, no? Whatever is the information, that does not matter. 
So in that way, uh, like here you can see when the bond breaking and bond making information was given, then the delta H for this reaction came out to be minus 2034. And it's exactly the same when the formation information is given to you. Okay. So it does not matter what information is given. We are talking of the same reaction. So the energy difference delta H reaction should also be the same. I hope this is clear. This is very important. Now predict giving a reason whether the entropy change is negative or positive. Okay, what do you expect? Is this positive or negative? Let's see the reaction uh, carefully. So I can see that we have five and six. We have total uh, six gaseous molecules, right? We have six gaseous molecules. And here we can see four, five, six, seven. So we have seven. So we are moving from six particles towards the seven particles. More number of particles if are formed, so more possible arrangements are seen. That means more degree of randomness. It means that the delta is, is becoming positive. Okay, your S final minus S initial. So S final is larger, S initial is lower. Got it? That means the randomness is what? The degree of randomness, I would say, is increasing. Degree of randomness. More right. Now, similarly, calculate the delta S for the reaction joule per Kelvin. Okay, one more thing. Like delta S values are always given in joule per Kelvin per mole. So whenever you are finding delta H or delta G using delta S, always remember that they are being given in kilo. So you make sure that you have converted your delta S values into uh, from joule to kilojoule by dividing it with 1000. Got it? So section 12 of the data booklet, the standard molar entropy for the oxygen is being given this way. Again, I don't have this booklet. So, so we, we will just take the values of uh, entropy from there. So just uh, um, like this is again very simple. I talked about this many a times that the entropy of product minus entropy of reactant. This is all that you need to do, uh, taking in account the number of moles as well. So the respective values for the different reactant and products uh, their entropy values are given. So you can see that here. So we had four moles of, let me let me just see one more time. So we have four moles of water, three moles of carbon dioxide, right? So we have four moles of water and three moles of carbon dioxide. These are your uh, mo molecules. They are your product molecules. So you take the values of these products minus you have C3H8, we have one mole of it and plus oxygen. For oxygen also, there will be some randomness into its molecule, right? So this is not zero as uh, we discussed for delta HF. So don't get confused with this thing. So just take care of the number of moles and just put down the values. We'll be able to get your answer. Here in this case, this comes out to be plus 102. That means that delta S value is positive as we expected earlier. We make this prediction in this part C. And yes, it's positive. That means the randomness for this reaction is increasing. Got it? Similarly, we have this part number five where they're asking you to find out the delta G value in kilojoules when the temperature is five degrees Celsius. Rest other values you can take from the above. So, so we all know that there is a relation which says whether your reaction is spontaneous or not. If your delta G value comes out to be negative, we call the reaction to be spontaneous. Got it? What is that relation? Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. What is the value of delta H? In the previous parts, we have already done. I'm just taking down the value from here. So this was your part number A and B. So this comes out to be minus 2043. Minus, what is your temperature? Just we saw that temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. So you just add 273 to it so that it gets converted into Kelvin. So this will become 278 Kelvin. So put it here, 278. And what is your delta S? Just we calculated 102. But that was in Joule, right? This is what I was telling you. Don't make a mistake here. This is in Joules. But the delta G values and delta H values, they are being always in kilojoules. So you cannot subtract or add something uh, which is in kilojoules and this, uh, delta S in joule. So I need to convert this to kilojoule as well. So I will divide this with the thousand. Now you just make this calculation at the end. You should be able to get your answer as minus 2071, which is the energy, the Gibbs free energy that we have found here. Now, what does this tell you? This says that since the delta G value comes out to be negative, this reaction, which is a combustion reaction of propane, is actually a spontaneous reaction. This is a crucial information that you can get from here. 
So with this, I hope that you have understood this whole part. This was all about this class where we tried to discuss so many questions. We have seen the thermochemistry part. We have seen it quite in detail. And I'm sure that you would have understood this. But if you have any kind of confusion, any kind of problem, please, please, please do ask me in the comment section so that I can provide you the solution as fast as possible, as quickly as possible. Now I will see you in some another video. We will discuss some more crucial topics of chemistry that to in detail and for some practice questions till then take care and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are dedicating for following this channel as well as your chemistry things bye take care